Good morning. Welcome. We are here today live on YouTube, and we're going to take a look at Prasrita Padatanasan today. So thank you for your requests. Just checking in to see if there's any questions. All right, let's get to it. And if there's questions, I'll stop and I'll answer the ones that I can. Um, if not, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them um, after the class. Um, we're just going to be taking a look at breaking down Prasarita Padotanasan into various different components. It's a pose that you can do just infinite things with um, and study it in so many different ways. But we're going to start looking at it from uh, a physical, you know, just um, getting into the po pose uh, point of view. And then we'll maybe look at a few subtle concepts that can help you uh, progress in a pose. So here we go. All right, so to start out, if you have a, a block, go ahead and grab your block. If you don't have a block, it's okay to use a book or a towel, like a bathroom towel, just folded neatly so that you can use this um, to lay back on. If you have two blocks, that would be even better. So I'm going to place my blocks here on my mat to get started. about you know palms distance and I'll show you how to set these up. First take a seat on your mat and thank you for coming today. Thank you for showing up for yourself as well. We try to keep these classes short so around 30 minutes. So take a deep breath and release any tension in the eyes, the ears and the throat. All right, so we'll set up our timer and we'll lay back on these blocks. So I'm going to set a block around right at the edge of my chest here. Okay, so right above the adrenal glands. So lay back on that block and it's nice to have one for the head as well. So opening the chest. Slowly bring the legs down, one at a time. Lay back on the block and take two or three breaths here. Inhale and release the chest, melt onto the block. And watch what happens here in the belly? Are you really gripping here? Can you allow that grip to soften and give you nice length here in the belly? And once you've done a few breaths here, if you want, start removing the head, the, the support behind the head and see how much you can take the head back. If this is too difficult, Go ahead and lift the head and you could bring it down slowly or put it on a, a different support. And to lift the head up, you need to keep the chin up. Okay, so do not, don't bring the chin to the chest first. So either remove the, the support behind your back or bring the chin up. Keep that chin lifted. Once you're sitting up, then bring the chin down. So repeat this exercise a few times just to get some mobility in the head and a little opening in the chest. It's always a good idea to reduce um, these, this thickness if that was too intense. So you can use a thinner block or less of a fold in your towel. If there's a lot of strain in the neck, then just laying down here in this block in this way with the neck supported will start opening the chest and give you more space in your neck. So, depending on where you are, this is just great. And you can just, you can support your neck in the back here and just see where is my neck ready for this or not. 
If it's too intense to come up with the neck, bend your knees, roll to the right and come out here. All right, so maybe do this one more time where you're laying the block, lay back on that block, allow the chest to open, release any tension in the eyes, the ears and the throat and the belly, open the chest. All right, the next exercise that we'll do, um, it's uh, it starts teaching a little bit more of this energetic lift that we have in poses. It's very important and you can use it while walking around or you can use it while practicing any yoga pro pose to just energize the body and energize the pose and start uh, discovering that aspect of your practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you uh, a little um, detail on my feet. Okay, so on my foot. So here's the foot. And we have these four points here on the foot. So we're going to imagine these two points underneath the big mounds of the toe. And then two, let's picture two points here at the bottom of the heel. So I have my arch here. Just a second. Okay, so here I have the arch that comes from the big toe to the heel, right? So we have our biggest arch here. And then we have our smallest arch here from the pinky to the heel. So we, we tend to work with this fourth toe here. This is the most important arch. This is the strongest arch from the big toe, but we work on this arch. So we press the fourth toe down the ball of the fourth toe and the heel and we lift that so you can do it here while sitting down you can uh, plant the foot onto the ground press these four points down into the ground and paying attention on that fourth arch here so pressing them into the ground and lifting the arch lifting the arch of the feet Okay, so this is step one. So we did it with the right foot. Let's do that with the left foot. So pressing these points down into the ground, behind the ball of the, of the toe here, press into ground, lift the arch, and then lift the small toe arch too. So we'll do it here sitting down, and then we'll do it standing up. And spread the toes, press, those points into the ground and lift the arch. Okay, so this is step one, so let's give it a try. Okay. We'll stand here on the mat in Tadasan. Feet are hip widths apart. So if, I, if my feet are a little bit too wide, I wanna bring them so that they're the same width as my hips. So hip widths apart all the way down. Feet are parallel to each other, so they're, I don't have one facing out a little bit. I have both of them, uh, you know, in line and parallel. Then spread the toes. <laughs> and once we spread the toes, just take a few deep breaths here. And one more. All right, now start pressing the toes down into the mat, lifting the arches. What do you feel in the legs? Do you feel that there's more tightness in the eyes, the ears and the throat? Is there more tightness in the belly? If so, just release that. Just work on lifting the arch a little bit, not so uh, strongly. Lift it a little less strongly, but then release the pressure in the eyes, the ears and the throat or in the belly. Make the legs very active, like a like a fist. So if you have, you know, your hand into a fist, you have your leg muscles into a fist. So the muscles are hugging the bone. So lifting the arch, hug the muscles of your leg to the bone, make them into a fist, and stand. Okay. And so the second part of this uh, three part little series is, so the first part is lifting the arches of the foot. The second part would be to lift the kneecaps on your knee. So the way this works is we're going to, with our index fingers, we're going to move the patella on top of the knee here. 
So move it around. Sometimes it makes some noises and you just release the leg. If sitting like this is uncomfortable, go ahead and place a little bit of a support underneath your seat. Sit here, make sure the leg is nice and relaxed and move the kneecap. Move the kneecap on this leg. This is a great thing to do to lubricate the knee joint, add some mobility there and improve the health of the knees. Okay, so if I pinch, I am not pulling up, I'm just pinching here, the very top squishy part right here um, where um, there's a connection with this bone and the, the kneecap, I'm not pinching, I'm just cut, pinching this top part and I'm gonna bring my knee up. So here, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not bringing, I'm not pushing my hand up, I'm just using, um, these muscles to lift the kneecap. So I do the same thing on the other side. So I, I see that there is, um, you know, there is a possibility to do that. So I engage my quadriceps and I can actually lift my kneecaps. All right, so we're gonna do that in conjunction with lifting the arches, making those legs nice and active and lifting the kneecaps. And we're going to use this in our pose. Okay, so again, we come up to standing and we engage the feet, we spread the toes. You can even picture five toes behind your heels, spread those two. So, heels, foot is nice and wide, um, ankle is very uh, narrow and compact. And we're lifting the kneecaps, engaging the muscles of the legs. So you have nice active legs. These legs can really um, withstand the weight of the body and can lift the body and lift the energy up. So lift the arches, spread the toes, spread the toes, the imaginary toes behind the heels, and lift the kneecaps. Okay, so as we lift the kneecaps, this is where we're getting to, okay? So we're gonna picture um, a parachute. So a parachute is like this, and then it has the, the parachute strings, right? So if you can picture a mini parachute, and that mini parachute is here. So we have this uh, parachute that is inside the, the it's an imaginary uh, exercise where this, this big parachute is here right inside the chest cavity, and the little strings of the parachute come down to the back, right? So you have this big parachute inside here. And we lift the chest up and we inflate our parachute. And then we can just tug on the little strings of the parachute here and we inflate this parachute and we feel that energy. We see where it comes down. Where can we grab that little string of the parachute? So inhale, lift and inflate the parachute. And so we create this feeling of a lift in the chest. So we're gonna do that together with the arches, engaging and hugging the muscle to the bone in the, in the legs, lifting the kneecap, and that's gonna create this lift of our parachute. And then we tug on that string, we lift the chest, feeling it much more in the back of the body than just the parachute lift here, but also in the back. All right, so let's do that together. All right, so feet on the ground here, engaging the toes, spreading the toes, spreading the five imaginary toes behind the heel, narrow ankle, engage your leg, and lift the kneecaps. When we lift the kneecaps, if you wanna stop there with these exercises, that's fine. You can just really make the legs strong then that, that power in the legs inflates your parachute. So you have this parachute that's engaged and open and you lift the chest without adding any tension in the belly, the eyes, the ears, and the throat. So if you're, if you're creating tension in the head, just release that. Then you're working a little bit too strongly. Lift the chest, release any tension. All right, so take a few breaths here. And um, we're gonna use this imagery of this lifted chest 
to support us in our pose. So engage the feet and then lift the parachute. <laughs> All right. So if now we're going to come back down onto our mats and we're going to work a little bit on the leg using this imagery of the parachute. So I might need a belt for this. If you have a belt, lean around, grab your belt, lay down so I can place one foot on the wall. So left leg on the wall here. We're going to do a few breaths where we bring our right leg up. So bring the right leg up, press the left foot into the wall, lift the arches, lift the kneecap, engage the legs, and then lift and engage your parachute here, pulling the strings in the back, lifting the chest. So if I'm here, it's fine. What I, the only uh, uh, command or uh, instruction that I have is that the uh, leg is very straight here. So even if this leg is all the way over here, that's perfectly fine. Make sure that you're not bending the leg. All right, so we come here. When, when we're doing this, um, we start on, uh, being able to see this, um, this movement of our hips here in, in most poses. And we call it tucking and untucking. So I'll go over really quickly. So if I have this arch here in my back, not from the lower ribs coming up, but from the pelvis actually rotating around the head of the femur, right? That there's this movement here. So when I create a little bit of an arch, I call this an untucking. When I remove the arch and I rotate the pelvis down so that the hip bones go down to the ground and the pubic symphysis comes up, this is tucking. So tucking, if overdone, can remove that little natural curve of the back. So we don't want to tuck so much that we uh, create a flatness in the back here. We want to leave our normal curve, but it is accentuated while untucking. Okay. So if I am in this pose, I tend to flatten the back against the floor here. So I want to recreate that tuck. So I, uh, to the untuck, I mean. So I, on this side especially, I untuck a little bit and cre recreate that um, little arch of the lower back that's natural. All right, so bring the right leg down. And I'm going to put my right foot on the uh, floor here and thinking about tucking and untucking here. So press the foot against the wall, lift the arches, engage the muscles of the leg. So hug the muscles to the bone, lift the kneecap and lift my parachute. And I can just lift the chest here without adding any tension in the eyes, the ears and the throat. And if Tension naturally just arises there. When I do that, I learn to release it. And slowly, you'll be able to keep the eyes, the ears, the throat, and the belly passive. So here we are. So we bring this leg up. Wherever you are here on this pose, keep the knee straight. And give yourself that untucking here. So untuck. One more breath. And then go ahead and bring the leg down. Come down, bend the knees, and roll over to your side. All right. If you have a chair or a support handy, we're going to bring that out. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to start folding forward, but I don't want to add any rounding in my back. So as I fold forward here, I hold on to my support so that I'm not um, rounding the back to fold forward. If this is the most I can do, and here my legs are so tight, that's fine, work here. What I wanna do here is I wanna use what we worked on with the feet. So I want to widen the, the toes of the foot, widen the imaginary five toes in the back of the heel, narrow heel, active leg, lift the knees, and come down. So I'm coming down and I reach, let's just say this point. Right before my back is going to start rounding, 
what I want to do is I want to think of my sit bones, which are these bony parts of my hips here, and I want to lift those. So here in this Uttanasana, I just want to lift my sit bones and release. And lift the sit bones. As long as I'm not dropping the sit bones here, but I can keep the sit bones lifted up into the ceiling, then I can come down a little more. Lifting the sit bones. So really, I'm lengthening the back of my leg. Another way to think about them is if I have a little bit of weight, I place the weight here, right, right on top of the sacrum. And I work here. So I lift the sandbag and release lift the sandbag by making the back of the leg um, longer, right? So lengthening this length, especially this last little bit of length here from here to here. I want to lengthen this. So lengthen that. And all right, so this in itself, it's a great practice just to come down here and then lengthen, lift the sandbag. So if you don't have a sandbag, that's fine. I just want a visual for you to see that you can lift the sandbag. So I have a you know, rotation here, making sure my knees aren't rotating in, making sure my feet are engaged. So I'm lifting the arches, spreading the toes, making sure my um, ankles aren't collapsing here. So my legs are firm, active, and working properly in this pose. All right, so here I engage the legs, the arches, and then I lift the sand back. So I'm gonna need this action in my Prasarita Padukhanasana. And if I can uh, lift my head and look at the wall in front of me, that's even better. So release, look at the wall, lift the sand back. If you need a break, go ahead and you can go into a break, uh, take a break here, you can bend the knees. Now I'm going to take a break. All right, and then we'll do two more of those where we come up and we lift that imaginary sandbag looking at the wall. Then breathe, inhale, lift the sandbag, look at the wall. All right, so this is a really great exercise to improve the length of the hamstring and um, create that firmness in the leg and then also a little bit of flexibility here in the lower back. All right, so I'm going to show you now um, another key concept for getting into this pose, um, Prasarita Padottanasana. So, what we'll do is we'll come in to our favorite Upavishta Konasana. All right, so take a breath here and slowly come into this shape, however it is that your body allows you to come into this. So this inner um, hamstring here, this inner leg part um, is very sensitive. So when you come into this pose, uh, come into it uh, carefully. So a couple things that happens as you're coming into that pose. If you have your folded towel or a block, it's a nice and handy prop to have um, during this pose. So what happens here when we have tightness in the hamstring and in the back, we tend to tuck, right? So tucking was this almost this flatness of my lower back. And so we have, we need the hand support. And even if when, you know, when we have this Upavishta pose, it's like, oh my gosh, my back is rounding and this is horrible. So what we're going to, if that's the case for you, add a little bit of a height here, sit on that height. And now, and I can sit on a little bit higher of a height too. What I can do is I can uh, bring my back to that normal uh, lumbar curve and I can lift my chest a little bit easier so I don't need that support. So I want to get to the place where I can sit like this. So add a support there uh, um, behind, underneath the sit bones so that you can sit up a little more. 
Okay. So here we're not, you know, we are, if we were here, then we need to untuck, but not, not untuck to get to that back bend, but untuck just to get to that normal uh, curve of the back. So here we will come into this pose, Upavishta Kodasan, where we have both legs out to the side. So as I'm uh, widening my stance here, we usually think, or there's a tendency to bring the feet out. Okay, I want us to think about this pose a little bit differently. I'm going to use the inner thigh here as my driver to bring the legs out. And in the beginning, there might not be much of a difference. Let's say, what's the difference? Or how do I know if I'm using my foot or if I'm using the inner thigh to bring the leg out? So what we, the feeling we want to have is that the bone here is moving towards the outside of the leg. So I want to, if I were to put both hands here at the head of my femur, I want to push them towards my hand. So push the, the femur bones away from each other. So push the bones away from each other and move with that versus use the foot as, you know, big uh, uh, force to, to open up the, the stance. <clears throat> okay. So here, same concept, we're going to, you know, if we're here, this is perfect. Here, it's also great. I'm going to engage my feet. So feet are nice and wide. I'm going to push through the heel, right? So heel, heel, and this part of the foot's going down and uh, down into, let's just say we're in this imaginary hallway where I can place both feet on both walls of the hallway, and I'm going to push the walls away. Okay, lifting the arch, engaging the leg, and lifting the kneecap here. So here I'm on this pose, and I'm thinking of the bone here going towards the um, outside part of the leg. So I'm widening through the inner thigh here, inner thigh, almost as if I had a belt here that pulled me back. Look at that. So I'll show you an image, uh, an exercise you can do on the wall that can really start improving and giving you this feeling of releasing the hips. So really the hips here are, you know, sometimes there's a lot of gripping, a lot of tension in the hips. With this pose, with pushing the heels out, we tend to just try to just bring softness around the head of the femur here. So take a few breaths here. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, show you on the wall what I mean by bringing this uh, inner thigh out to the outside of the leg. All right. So if um, this uh, thirty minutes will be up in about two three minutes, and so uh, up until here, this is really great exercise to just sit and breathe in this Upavishta pose. I'll go on for a couple more minutes um, just to get to Prasarita Padottanasan. Um, this pose will be recorded and um, posted on the channel so you can go ahead and um, finish it uh, if you would like to later on. All right, so what I wanna show you is um, what the feeling should be on the inner thigh here. And also it's a great, this is um, what I'm gonna show you. It's an incredible exercise to do. It's uh, almost sometimes erases anxiety. And I say this after practicing it for years. Um, in the beginning, it was more of a releasing of this tightness around the head of the femur here. Uh, it was you know, very tight, a lot of grip, so we did, I really had to breathe through this pose. But as you do it more and more and more, you can use it um, for so many different things. So it's a really great one. Okay, so I'm, what I want is I want two belts here. I want, I want to string them together like this. So just two normal belts. I'm going to use two blocks, and this is a really 
tricky to get them in, but um, all right, here we go. So I'm going to come to a wall here, and I'm going to bring my sit bones all the way to the wall so that my sit bones are pretty much touching the wall here. All right. Come to the wall, and I'm going to place the belts around my feet. And the great thing about this is I can, you know, uh, use this at whatever um, distance that I would like. Okay, so just after a, a hard day, just coming to your wall with your belts and um, laying here, it's uh, a wonderful thing to do. I'm gonna show you a variation with the chairs in case you don't have belts, but you do have some chairs laying around. Put two chairs. All right, and you can probably imagine how this works. So you can keep your chairs set up. <laughs> and every half hour, you can come out. If you're at your desk, you can come out and you can just rest your legs here on the chair. All right, and you can move the chairs back as you need more space. So this is an excellent de-stressing place that you can come to, to release the back, to release the legs. Inverting is great uh, for the system. All right. Okay, so this is a quick modification. So back to our pose. <laughs> So what I'm going to show you here for you to have a visual of this inner thigh moving out towards the outer thigh. You can practice it or you can practice with the chairs, but just so you can have a visual of uh, eventually the feeling that the body learns to bring that inner thigh out towards the outer thigh. So this is what that looks like. Okay. So place your belts and you're out against the wall here. And I'm going to grab two blocks. Hopefully, yes, you can see that. And I'm gonna place the block right on my inner thigh here. So I'm gonna place both of them here, creating a little V like this. All right, so the blocks are here. Yeah. Now I'm going to use my weight, and this is a, it's a five pound sandbag. Usually I would put about 30 to 50 pounds here. You put the weight on top of the, of the blocks, and then you receive that weight on the inner thigh. So you can put your timer and spend, I mean, a good five to 15 minutes here. Receiving that weight so if we were in a, in a live class, you know, we would do this together and you would start uh, teaching the body that intelligence of receiving the weight here on the inner thigh and teaching that movement of the thigh, of the, uh, you know, uh, inner thigh moving towards the outer thigh, like this. So if you really just release the belly, any tension in the eyes, the ears and the throat, we're not going to stay here for a very long time, but I just wanted you to see this. And if you are able to experience it, it is a really great thing to do. All right, so then slowly I remove the blocks, the sandbag. <clears throat> and once I've been here for a while, it's a good idea to use your hands or your belt to help you get out of the pose. So move my legs together with the belt. Take a breath here in the middle. <clears throat> and roll to the side and come out. <clears throat> okay. So going um, forward with our um, study of this prostrita, Padottanasana, we come back here onto our 
Upavishta Prakhanasan. And we think of that inner thigh pushing towards the outer thigh, lifting the chest, and then using the feet. So press both heels out, lift the arches, lift the body and sit on the height if you need it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start folding forward here. Okay. So I'm gonna start out with the support. I'm gonna use a little height underneath my sit bones. And I am going to look at my knees and make sure my knees are not turning in here. I'm going to make sure that my toes stay pointing up towards the ceiling. So I'm going to spread my toes, lift the arches, engage the legs, just like we did in the beginning where the muscles hugging the bone and lift the kneecaps. When you practice actively, um, not only do you start energizing the legs, but you really work out the legs too. So push the, he the, the heels out, engage the legs and see that energy coming up onto the body. And here, take a few breaths and imagine that parachute. So legs are energized. You can lift the chest and make sure that your parachute is full energize, lifting the body, and here towards the back, think of the back of the body more, you can pull the little string down, which doesn't bring the parachute down, by the way, but pull the string down, and you feel where that energy is meeting here in the back of the body. So inhale, soften the eyes, the ears, the throat, lift the parachute, and start folding forward. So all those steps make the, the forward fold uh, not collapse. So as you fold forward, you have this inner rotation of your thigh without bringing the knee along with it. So the thigh rotates in and then the hips just go around that thigh. So inner thigh rotates in, outer thigh, I mean inner thigh <laughs> rotates in, knee stays facing the, the ceiling, stays facing up. So I don't have this happening when really. all my feet rolling in. Feet stay there. So if I uh, if I rotate this um, leg in here at the top, I'm going to untuck the pelvis. Right, I'm going to create that feeling that we had uh, in uh, Uttanasana, where we were lifting the sandbag here. So I'm going to lift that sandbag. Pretend that sandbag is here. Lift that sandbag. Bring the uh, femurs away from each other and have the sensation of lifting that sandbag. And when you have that uh, untucking, lifting the sandbag as we did in the forward fold here in the beginning of the chair, and then bringing the femurs out, then you're allowed to fold forward. Once you lose that and you're kind of tucking and, and folding forward, the rounded back and stop, um, coming forward. So that's the journey of coming forward correctly as you uh, engage the legs here, make sure that the knees and the feet are not rolling in. You have the sensation of the top of the femur rolling in, which untucks the pelvis here. And then you're going to lengthen that very last bit of your hamstring, like we did when we were on the chair with the sandbag here. So lift the sand, so untuck the pelvis, uh, top of the femurs rotate in, keep the pelvis untucked and start coming down with an untucked pelvis and an engaged leg. So maybe here, we stay here for a few months and slowly we breathe here and we remove any tension around the head of the femur. So any tension in here, we try to soften the head of the femur Create that inner rotation, that tucking. All right, and slowly we come down into right on the floor. And there should be maybe even a little bit, you know, a little bit more untucking there. So I might be going down too far. Um, even if the floor is that close, it's better to do the pose correctly. It's healthier for you. 
So untuck the pelvis here, lengthen the legs, and come down. All right. And coming down here, but receiving that quality of untucking the pelvis, which means, um, you know, bringing the sit bones out and rotating the sin. It's actually, you get many more benefits of just doing this than trying to come down where you're rounding the back and, and possibly injuring some part of the body. So uh, this is a really great pose to practice. Um, for women, it's great on your menstrual cycle, but for anyone, it's great. Uh, it's a really great restorative pose, really um, great to learn these actions. And then you can apply this into your prasarita padasthanasana and do that pose uh, so that it really energizes you and helps you. All right, so take a few breaths here. Come out and sit here in Dandasana with a support and see if now you can sense the femurs coming away from each other in Dandasana. You might have a much easier time in widening the femurs towards the outside of the leg, releasing any tension in the belly, eyes, ears, and throat. Okay. So we'll bring our chair out and we will um, come into Uttanasana on the chair. So I'll do it this way. So Uttanasana, I'm sorry, I meant Prasarita Palatanas. So we'll bring the, the feet out here. And we have our chair in front of us. All right, so I want to press the feet into the ground. Press the outer edges of the feet on the ground, spread the toes, lift the arches, and lift the kneecaps, and then release. And then make the leg very active, make the uh, muscle hug the bone here. Soften the belly, lift the kneecaps. All right, as you come forward, is the same concept that we had while we were in this um, upavishta coming forward, right? So we want to remember, uh, that sandbag exercise we did. So we want to start untucking the pelvis here, lifting the sit bones towards the ceiling. Okay, so really untucking the pelvis and coming forward with your elbows on the chair. Really uh, lifting the sit bones up towards the ceiling here. Making the feet very um, wide, ankles narrow, leg a very active muscle hugging the bone, lifting the kneecap, and you energize your pelvis like that. And then face towards the wall in front of you. Lift the head. So lift the head here from the sit bones, almost as if the back of your head were it was going to hit your dorsal spine. So lift the head. All right, so stay, stay in the pose, breathe. I'll show you what it looks like from the side here. So you're coming here. So here, if I were not lifting my sit bones, right? So lifting this with a sandbag exercise we did here. So I'm going to lift my sit bone and untuck my pelvis. This is what it looks like. All right, and then here, lifting my head. So energizing my leg, lifting the kneecaps. Planting feet into the ground, lift my arches, lift the kneecaps, and then inflate my parachute so that I'm not jamming by over tucking or anything. So lift my parachute, you can pull my string, <laughs> lift the head, okay? And if you have one of these chairs, um, without the back, uh, they're kind of a, they're a yoga chair, but if you have one, you can come forward on your chair. You can use it like this. You can also do this, you know, if you go under a table and so you can get creative, but you can uh, use it so you can lift your head. Sideways. All right, 
and slowly getting into a healthy prasarita padottanasana. You chair here, right? And Okay, so if you um, just practice here on the chair, just lifting the back of the leg, energizing the legs, that's enough. That's a great prasarita padottanasana here. So the inner thigh here pushes towards the outer leg, right? So we have that movement that we saw uh, laying down. And slowly you teach the body that, but you can, when you're here, you can say, okay, I'm going to use my inner thigh to push against my uh, outer thigh. So here you untuck the pelvis, lift the sit bones, and bring the femurs, the head of the femurs, away from each other, but from the inner thigh. So, the, the, so use that motion, use that action, I should say. Okay, so coming down, you can bring the hands to the same line of your feet if you can if not you can just stay here and create that action in the legs energize the the legs energize the feet lift the kneecaps bring the inner thigh towards the outer thigh untuck the pelvis so untuck create um, that length on the very top of the hamstring here. Then you can bring the hands back. Okay, and then bring the head down so that your head is in line with the feet and the hands and you're standing on the, the back of the head more than the front. Okay, so maybe I can also wait a few more years before I get there, but that's the, the idea. So hands here, and eventually you can bring your elbows back here too. All right, and then inhale and come up. And stand in Tadasan for a few breaths. So the journey is getting to the pose. Um, once that you prepare all the steps uh, with, you know, give them their time and their attention, then the final pose is a joy. It's almost, you know, just a bliss to be in. I hope that you enjoyed the sequence and um, Prasarita Padatanasan, and that you're able to practice the different parts of um, of this pose. If you have any questions, please send them in the comments. If you have any requests, um, send them to me also. Thank you so much for being here and see you next Monday. <laughs>